Hey, hey everyone. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a bit different from our other ones because in this video, we're going to install a new, beautiful Arch Linux-based operating system, Exodia OS. We're also going to set it up for hacking, so don't worry. Just grab a seat, grab some snacks, and enjoy the video. So, Exodia OS. It's a highly customized Arch-based Linux distribution built for and by cybersecurity experts and also suitable for daily usage, capable of performing the strongest pen tests and the simplest daily tasks. Without more chit-chat, let's move to the Exodia OS website and get our hands a bit dirty. You'll find the link to the website in the description of this video. Once you open the website, you'll be greeted with a beautiful and sleek user interface. I really like it, by the way. If you scroll a bit down, you'll see different features of this OS, like TUI app support, PowerShell and ZSH, and many other things. Let's quickly click the Downloads button and get this thing. All right, so we get different install options for this operating system, like the Home Edition for general use. We're going to use this one in the video, but you can also try others based on your personal preferences. They also have a wireless edition specifically for Wi-Fi pen testing and cybersecurity, and a dark edition mainly focused on anonymity and privacy. Click on Home and download the ISO file of this OS. Once you've got it, we can move forward with the installation on our VMware. So open up your VMware and make a new virtual machine. You can select the ISO file and click Next. For the Linux version, select Other Linux and then you can name your OS, let's say Exodia for this example. Then it'll ask you for the maximum disk space. We can give it a minimum of 30 gigabytes, that's enough, but if you want to give it more, you can. Click Next and then Customize Hardware. Give at least four gigabytes of RAM to your virtual machine. Again, if you have more, give it more for a better experience. Once done, click Finish and power on the virtual machine. It'll start our Exodia OS. It's not going to take long. And here we go. Our brand new Exodia OS running live on our virtual machine. The actual video starts from here because this is where the fun begins. So this OS uses a window manager. Instead of a traditional desktop environment like KDE, the window manager installed by default is BSPWM. I don't really know what it stands for either. This OS is mainly for people who love writing and want to get a Hyperland-like experience without putting in too much effort. You just install the OS and boom, you're done. You get that same minimal clean aesthetic without manually setting up every single dependency or config. Now, let's experience this thing for a while and see how it feels. All right, the first thing I really like about this OS is the themes. You get a whole bunch of different ones and you can switch between them with just a single click. Press Ctrl plus Alt plus T on your keyboard to open the theme menu and switch between different styles. Some are even cybersecurity focused, like Hack and Hacker Den, which are pretty cool. Definitely worth checking out. Okay, now let me show you another cool feature. What you're going to do is press the Windows key plus T and boom, we've got a floating terminal open. Want another one? Press Windows plus T again and there you go, another terminal. You can open as many as you want. And if you want to close one, just move your cursor over the window you want to close and press Windows plus C at the same time. These are called keybinds, and you can find a full list on the Exodia OS website. You can even customize them. I haven't done that yet, though. These keybinds make everything so much easier by keeping you close to your keyboard and reducing your need to use the mouse. It speeds up your workflow and saves time. And it's not just terminals. You can also open your browser or music player using keybinds. Again, all of them are listed on the official website. I'll drop the link in the video description. But hey, don't leave just yet. The video isn't over. You've heard the benefits, but let's talk about the drawbacks. Yes, this distro is still in development, and there are quite a few issues I noticed. First, it's based on Arch, and trust me, Arch isn't exactly beginner-friendly. When I first started using this OS, it literally took me two hours just to figure out how to update it. Every time I tried, it crashed with an error that I had to fix manually. And another thing, right now we're using this distro in live mode, which means every time you restart, everything resets and all your configurations are gone. To avoid that, 
you should install it properly instead of just running it live. The installation process is super easy. Just click next a few times and you're done. Once installed, you can remove the ISO file and run the OS normally like any other. That said, I wouldn't recommend installing it right away. Instead, try it out via live boot for a few days. Once you get comfortable and feel ready, then install it. It'll take some time to learn the key binds and remember them, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, everything becomes super easy. I've been using this distro for a while now and I've faced no major issues, so that's all I've got for you in this video. If you found it useful, please subscribe and like the video so it can reach a wider audience and more people can learn about this awesome OS.